It's Thursday with Success Story Podcast. Today I had a guest coming from UK. He came here with no experience. He worked and he launched his business. If you want to learn about his story, what he did, watch this, leave comments below and subscribe to our channel. So today we have a Chris. We are very happy here to have a Chris with us in this Success Story podcast. Chris, you came here for a long time, and at school you studied articles, and you said to yourself, "Oh, I'm 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 going to do something else." I studied in school in general thing, but I would like to complete other stuff in in my studies. So you went to to the art architect and you do many things and you decided to come to Dubai mm. and you spent a lot of time in Dubai all of a sudden you project in Expo you said Expo change your life yeah just I want to hear this story so yeah I mean I was I did music technology so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a, like a musician audio engineer okay and I did that when I was like 17 18 mm -hmm. I finished I did yeah so at school I wasn't a great student mm -hmm. Um, I was like very bang average. Um, sometimes I wouldn't wouldn't go, or you know, um, which is not good. I don't recommend doing that. But um, <laughs> but as soon as I finished school and I went to mm. college, music college, I kind yeah. of found my calling. Mm -hmm. um, I did I did art college for a year before I went to music college. Yeah. So I have that kind of creative thing in me. My mom's an artist, so mm -hmm. I kind of maybe get it from her. Okay. Um, uh, and yeah, and at music college, I kind of found my, like I said, found my calling and mm -hmm. I think mainly it came from my music teacher who was mm -hmm. called John Verity. And, um, you know, he's a, he's an old rocker from the seventies mm -hmm. and I kind of had this kind of relationship with him really great and, and to, to this day. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of saw that I was like really passionate about it. And, um, and it was actually him that got me the job in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Um, so I worked, I worked for like two years after music college mm -hmm. in, in a company called Strong Room Studios mm -hmm. in London, which is amazing. It's, okay. um, um, it's a big facility that has maybe 10 studios. Um, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, making coffees and cleaning mm -hmm. the cat litter and, mm -hmm. and doing everything you do when you, when you start off in the industry. Sure. And, um, and it, but it was a great place to work because um, everyone that worked there or everyone mm -hmm. that was recording there is, was like famous. Yeah. You know, you know, every, it, the top 10 tracks in mm -hmm. the UK were kind of made at Strong Room. So yeah. it was but great to be. You mm -hmm. started small, right? Like you didn't say, oh, I'm graduated. I have a degree. I have certificate in No, musician. it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it started small and step by step and the progress you made until yeah it happened um, yeah so uh, how i got on that in yeah. in strong room in london is is that i offered to work for free mm -hmm. so wow. that's one thing you don't you don't get paid yeah um and then when i was working um as an assistant engineer i mm -hmm. would offer to to create websites for the mm -hmm. different producers and mixers at strong room okay in return for them to kind of let me sit with them a li little bit yeah. more ask a few more questions mm -hmm. um so that's how i got in and then one day my music teacher, he kind of messaged me and says, um, uh, I have a friend in Dubai, mm -hmm. um, he has a studio, would you mm -hmm. be interested in, in going there? Mm -hmm. I was like, of, like, it was a no brainer. I was, I was like, of course, you know, son, a job, money. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, that was in 2004. So, so, so that's uh, when I, how did you feel, Chris, when you, when you sat with the people, like you say, just you graduated or you had, how did you feel? Was it easy for you to adapt yourself with the others, like experience other than? I mean, you know, when they, so one of my sessions was um, with uh, Danny Minogue. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh my God, this is going to be like, you know, maybe she doesn't like coffee. Maybe she wants something <laughs> else. Or I was, this is what I was worried about. Yeah. But honestly, what you'll find in any industry, mm -hmm. especially, especially the music industry and, and yeah. audio is like the most humble people, yeah. sorry, the most talented people mm -hmm. and the biggest successful, you know, these famous people yeah. are the most humble, normal people, so. the ones which are very flashy and mm. and and show off their wealth and yeah. everything and speak they're not they're not as talented as, as yeah you know. it just they, they found something and they want to show the world we have yeah so I'll, yeah I'll, you, you are correct yeah. and we see today many things many examples in social media mm. 
people are showing off and actually yeah. I don't know about them but I know some people they should they like to show off to, at the end of, of, mm. of the month it's an insecurity I, yeah 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 I think I think um, yeah it's just it's I, I find it all the time where the the most successful music producer yeah would be would be doing that mm -hmm. if he didn't have the fame he 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 would do be doing exactly what he's doing mm -hmm. but in a bedroom for for like no money yeah it's just that he followed his passion yeah and if you follow your if you follow your passion if you really really want something yeah. and it's really what you want to do the money and the yeah. success will follow that, that's what you did i think because you had a passion to do to go to this industry yeah and, because you, and you work for free you work because it's because you don't i you know i so i was working during the day for mm -hmm. free mm -hmm. Um, and in the evenings, I would I would travel back. It's like a two-hour train ride, mm -hmm. and then I would work in a in a in a in a bar in a pub. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my life, and and I didn't care. Like I didn't have any yeah. money. My parents aren't rich, uh -huh. so um, it was hard. Mm -hmm. Looking back, I would it was like I can't believe I ever did that. Yeah. But at the time, you have so much. You you just have so much energy. You're younger, yeah. Which helps, yeah. but you just you just do it because you're so passionate about it. And um, even now, like setting up my, mm. I, I know that there's a few more things to talk about before we mm. talk about that. But it's the same way now. Like I I, I earn less than I do now, mm -hmm. um, but I'm the happiest I've ever been. Yeah, good. you know. So it's um, I don't think money and happiness uh, goes together at all. H how old you were here when, when you just arrived in Dubai? I was 21. Yeah. 21 yeah and and um i only ever traveled on a plane once before in my life wow yeah, yeah. that's really amazing yeah Chris. and uh, i have a, like an interesting story uh, yeah. i was talking to um my client yeah um is that in england it's very very yeah. cold yeah so if you're walking down the high street mm. and you're freezing mm. and then you go into a, a shop mm. and it's like whoosh, you hear that you yeah. feel that warmth from the heating yeah in dubai it's the other way around so i was in <laughs> i was in the airport and it's yeah. like freezing cold inside mm. the doors open you go outside and it's just like whoosh, heat yeah. and i came i arrived in two, uh, july 2004 mm. and it was just like oh my god yeah what, so, what so, is this place so, 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 same, same thing for us like in dubai we all there is always here you know hot the the, the summer we like winter so when there mm. when the, there is a rain we see everyone is outside Out there, celebrating yeah, wet, oh yeah. we have a rain we have yeah, a rain yeah. it's different completely different yeah. in england yeah. where we're just you are waiting for the sun summer oh mm. i'm going mm. to enjoy yeah. it's opposite and i think that um for example my brother yeah. he's um he's great at what he does and everything like that but he he doesn't have the same passion to mm. travel or make yeah. a life abroad and i think there's two kinds of people everyone in dubai all the expats mm. they all have something in common which is you're away from your home your family and you've made a jump you know and yeah. i think um we, we can talk about it later but mm. making the jump yeah. is uh, hugely important because when you do jump mm. good things happen so uh, after you arrived here in dubai how was it um, it was great. Like the company that I work for, um, mm. were fantastic with me. You know, when I, when I joined, they, um, uh, it's a husband and wife company mm. and I was there for 16 years and they were, they were, they were like my mum and dad. So mm. they treated me, I, I mean, I look young now and I'm 39. Mm. You can imagine what I looked like when I was 21. I looked like yeah. this scared little boy. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that they saw this scared little boy, but they, they took me under their wing and they nurtured me. So I'm always, I'm always grateful for that experience. yeah so, so you worked there for 16 years 16 years uh, and uh, t t talk uh, talk to me about it's the a long expo, time. expo well like the, how, how the opportunity came to you to work for an expo and you, yeah you gain the, the the knowledge with the other people so in the in that 16 years mm. um i was doing um i you know we were doing radio commercials mm -hmm. i was doing um tv commercials yeah. sometimes i was composing music Sometimes I was doing sound design for, mm. for radio commercials, recording yeah. voiceovers. And then and then I became a creative director and mm. I was like filming documentaries and little things yeah. like that. So I really kind of, I'm a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. I can do a little bit of everything. Um, so I did that for 16 years. I, I, I must admit that I should have, shouldn't have been there for 16 years. Mm -hmm. You know, in Dubai, you become very, you can come, you can come, 
you can become quite lax and comfortable in a situation. Yeah. Your salary's coming, yes. you know, you have a girlfriend, everything's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. You don't realize you're getting older. Security, Security. Just, just and, the and time is, yeah, is passing and, and you don't realize. Yeah, so uh, yeah. I, 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 always, I always thought security was really important. Mm. Mm. And then when I, and then now I would say, no, I would say like, if you, if every day you wake up and you're a bit so. nervous or a bit stressed, that's when you kind of push forward a bit, it's true, it's if that true. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the worry and the stress. Makes you, uh, the, you need a little bit of stress in your life to perform yeah. a bit harder. Yeah, uh, and, and I was reading this book called uh, Start Living and Stop Worrying by Carly Garnegie. Mm. He said 70% uh, of patients can, can cure themselves without being stressed or yeah. worried. Mm. So sometimes stress is okay, so but- A little bit A helps. little bit, yeah, but not too much. Uh, yeah. Too much it mm. is going to have a different effect, I think, negative effect. Uh, and now when you, Chris, you, you, you worked at Expo after you spent 16 years with the company, mm. how Expo changed your life? S little things, right? So um, now I'm in my like normal black shirt and jeans, <laughs> which I wore for 16 years. Yeah. When you work at Expo, obviously it's different. You're you're in a very corporate environment. Yeah. You're you're um, doing meetings with like with ministers of state and mm -hmm. and important people. Yeah. So you, uh, the first thing I I just felt uncomfortable because I was wearing mm -hmm. like suits and yeah. and, but the, the weird thing is that I was wearing a suit and a tie and but then I had my headphones yeah. on. I was doing still doing music and audio stuff because that was my role at Expo. Mm -hmm. So. It was weird and uncomfortable to to be doing like mm -hmm. audio stuff in a office cubicle. Yeah. You know, it yeah, was, it was yeah. weird. That was the first weird thing, and 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 presenting to yeah. people like um, that was. There's no there's no way I would do this podcast with you mm. five years ago. I would just be too shy, nervous. There's just no way it would happen. Expo kind of brought me out of my shell. Uh huh. A lot. It made me Expo made me realize that I'm I can do a lot more than mm. what I was doing at the, my previous company. So, so, so you were a shy person before. Yeah, I'm very, and very every, shy. everyone can change, right? We, we we are not here just like like a trees, or we cannot change. We cannot change our belief. We cannot change our mm. personality. Mm. We can, we cannot change. Yeah, we are all. I for me personally, I was a shy person. Mm. Like if you see me at the school, a person who who cannot go outside, cannot read small paragraph. Mm. I loud. can't imagine that. Um, from, from, <laughs> yes, it's true. I was like that, and. I changed. Yeah, yeah. Everyone can. Every everyone said, "Oh, I am since young. I'm like that. So mm -hmm. I have to be like this." You, so. you know the saying, like if you smile to the world, the world will smile back. Yeah. And it's similar kind of thing. Like I was, I was quiet, shy, but I was very polite and nice. Yeah. Um, I think that sometimes you need to come out your shell a bit more for people to kind of take you seriously or hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. So I'd, ha I'd, you know, I'd be quietly confident. Yeah. But at Expo, I, always, I try to come out my shell a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And with the actions, it's not, it doesn't like you, you cannot overcome these things without taking action, even sometimes uncomfortable. Mm. And sometimes uh, you, you don't compare with, with, uh, with, others, uh, with other people, you just focus on, your, on your, what you want, where mm. you want to go. Mm. So that's, I think, you, what, what you did, Chris. You didn't compare yourself with the others. You took uncomfortable action. You participated in the expo mm -mm. and changed and expo just now you told me before five years if, if you told me said i would not do it there's no way no, yeah no. um yeah so at expo i was like i said i was the only person doing yeah. audio and uh, that helped me because everyone else in the in the organization was kind of super smart mm. sp spoke well eloquent yeah. bright super the you know at, yeah. at expo they had the best of the best yeah um, but what uh, was what was good for me is that yeah. I was the only person doing audio, okay. and so you can imagine if you're in a if you're in a meeting of twenty people and yeah. you're talking about what sound should play on at Expo, yeah. it was so refreshing for me just to kind of come in with my laptop. I've already yeah. kind of made the track, or and I just click play, mm -hmm. and it's like you know two minutes of their life in that day they're listening to music, so they remember me and my face. Yeah. I think people remember my face <laughs> for good or. <laughs> probably for bad mm -hmm. and um mm. and it was just kind of like i was known as like the music guy at expo so mm. i was really lucky i was mm -hmm. really lucky 
Mm-hmm. And then, and then, like when you saw yourself between other people, twenty persons in the same room, they are already talking about expo about their goals. Mm-hmm. And how how did you get with them? Like how how yeah. did you show up at this time? So I worked in the visitor uh, visitor experience department. Yeah, and there was like I think maybe twenty twenty five of us. Yeah, um, and our responsibility as, as a department was to you know think about the visitor so when mm. they arrive what do they see what do they hear um how do they know where to get where they're yeah. going um how do they feel do they feel stressed comfortable mm. informed et- entertained so that's kind of what we did we did the signage we did the digital mm. screens we did the, the um the sound mm. everything that a visitor experiences that was our department and um and federica who was mm. my our everyone's boss yeah. now she's um actually part of my company mm-hmm. so um uh so 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 yeah it was it, it was a wonderful kind of team that mm-hmm. she built um and all of the if you think about it sound and and um sight it's all combined mm. into an experience right so mm. it was great working with the other other kind of team to kind of if, if I do something with sound, then they would do something visually mm. that would um, complement the sound. Mm-hmm. So mm. when you when you were working in Expo, mm. like at a certain point, there is because life or any project or any things you go, mm. it's just like a season, right? Sometimes like a summer, summer mm. in, in mm. UK, mm. or sometimes uh, winter. Like you are, you are. There, there is no like something uh, straight. You if you feel. Happy, you will always feel happy. If you feel motivated, you will be always feel motivated. Mm. And w- when you work in the expo, of course, there was uh, bad moments and good moments, right? Mm-hmm. You felt maybe you say to yourself, I- I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail if, if I don't do this project, if I don't do good at uh, this project. Mm. So how... how, how You'd be surprised. I, yeah. I never... I never felt like I was going to fail. Yeah. I was, I was just... I was all, I just... I really believe in positive mm-hmm. thinking and, and I might sound like a bit like a hippie, like, like my mum. Mm. Um, but I really believe like if you, if you want something, yeah. it will come. Yeah. If you want something bad enough, it will come. Mm-hmm. So my, when I joined Expo, there was no, yeah, I was, my, my only job at Expo, to be honest yeah. with you, was to record some um, voice announcements yeah. and curate mm-hmm. some background music. That mm-hmm. was it. But um I, you know, I was, I was like, we don't have a theme song, you know, we don't have sonic branding, we mm. don't have this, and the people in the organization didn't really know what what sonic branding was, and they didn't really think that we could do a theme song and everything. Mm-hmm. So that was my project. My aim, my aim for those three years was to mm. get this song made, mm-hmm. um, and that song was going to be our sonic brand branding, our sonic identity, the soundtrack of Expo, and then that song was mm. like the the top of the pyramid right so yeah. without that song all the other things didn't make sense mm. so so that was my that was like my big uh, project and big. how long did you work in expo like for, for the song for for the whole whole period like since you started this project until it's finished um i was i think it's like nearly three years because we had three COVID. years yeah yeah wow so. uh, and three years like it was uh uh, uh, discovery, uh, exploration, or learning new stuff, new things. Mm. Well, uh, uh, w- w- what did you learn from this experience? God, I, l- I learned. I mean, if, if you imagine even doing the song, yeah, I was working. I had a budget to be able to work with Hussein Al Jasmi. Wow, you know, he's, he's you worked with him together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and a guy called Greg Wells. Greg Wells wow. is a big Grammy Award winning producer. So. Just just be able to do that was cool. Yeah. And if you have an expo email, mm. then you can reach out to these people. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing that I'm really, really proud of is that mm. I've always believed in my friend Joe, mm. uh, Joe Dickinson, who's who's my co-founder at With Feeling. Mm. So um, so I said to Joe, you know, we, you know, you're going to write the expo theme song mm-hmm. and um, Celine Dion's going to sing it. That's what I thought at the time. Yeah. <laughs> And he goes, you're, you're talking rubbish, Christus, you know, it's, <laughs> Expo are never going to ask me to do the song. And I said, mm. you're the most talented songwriter I know. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, you can do the demo. Just do a, do a do a demo, and mm. I'll play it to to the to the, you know to the top guys there, and mm. they'll love it. Mm. And um, and he did a demo, and they loved it. And then and ever since then, we just took that small song, yeah. that small demo, and we just built it and built it, built it. So you gain the confidence, you gain the courage. You you were like before. I I think, or from what you say, you said, I am now Chris. Since I I entered in, into this project, mm. I'm going out of walking out of this project with many things. Yeah, that I saw a big opportunity. You, you saw I, the opportunity. I, I saw an opportunity to. I saw. I again. I don't want to sound like it like a big hippie, but I wrote. I wrote my CV mm -hmm. post Expo during mm -hmm. before like during Expo just before mm -hmm. I joined because I really believe that if you write something down yeah. it will it will come to you. So um so I wrote my my CV which mm -hmm. was Ex uh, Expo theme song, Expo sonic branding. Yeah. And Expo is like a big it's the biggest event in the Middle East ever. Yeah. So um, I just thought about, you know, what would my C how would my CV look if I did mm. this? And I wrote it down and it all, and it all came true. So wh why did you write things down just to, to remind yourself, to remind your subconscious mind? It's like, a vision board. Yeah. You know, you know, it's Chris, really true. I, I know it sounds true. people that will see the podcast, hear the podcast. Mm. They'll think um, they'll I don't know what they'll think, but it's really true. It's really true. It's true. You remind, you remind me of, of one Olympic uh, player. I, I think he, he was Italian. In, in 2000, 2012, if I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, he, 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 he participated in one of the Olympics, but he didn't go through. He didn't, uh, he didn't uh, take any medal. But in 2016... He participated. Yeah, yeah. In 2016, he was just about to participate mm. and he got injured. Mm. You know what he did? He did, he, he wrote something in the paper. He said in 2020, mm. I'm going to have a golden medal. Mm -hmm. And when 2020, he got the medal. Yeah. You know why? He wrote his vision yeah. every day. He was checking in the morning. I'm going to have yeah. a medal. I'm going to have to yeah. gold until he made it. It's, it's true. It's, it's, um, I don't know what it is, you know, mm -hmm. God, universe, I don't know, but it's, it's, um, maybe, maybe it's just scientifically, it's just kind of like you're right, you're, you know, you, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it, it's, 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 it, focus. it comes, it's focus. It's focus. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. When you focus on something, you focus on where you want to go. Yeah. If you love what you do, yeah. you go for it and you, you don't, you don't look at the, the, the obstacles. Yeah. You focus just to go. So, some people here will say, Okay, if I have a goal, but they mm. look at the obstacles, so they direct mm. their focus on the obstacles instead of the goal. That's, no, that's interesting. I, d I never think about obstacles. Yeah. Um, and at Expo, you can imagine the obstacles are people, right? Levels mm. of approval. I just went to the, I just went to the top. I didn't. I went to the the final approval mm -hmm. phase. Really, that's that's mm -hmm. kind of how I've always thought about it. I don't really think about. Mm. Because these obstacles are small, like yeah. setting up a business, there's lots of ob obstacles. Um, True. Um, but you just have to kind of think about the final, mm -hmm. you know, the the end end game, right? So, so when you finish from Expo, you said, "I am now a different person. I am yeah. Chris. I'm a different person. I have a vision. I have the capabilities. I have mm -hmm. the skills. I yeah. believe in myself. <clears throat> I am. I am different person. So, mm -hmm. how how change you Expo?" What did you do after Expo? Again, I think we were talking before, like I'm not a gamer. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not interested in that, but I'll use the word leveled up. Mm -hmm. um, Expo Expo took this kind of like, um, you know, young guy mm -hmm. um, and just brought something out of me, like, an on, like something entrepreneurial or yeah. something where I just felt like, okay, so if you're, if I'm, I, I learned a lot from these people that mm. work in uh, Expo. So if you're in a meeting and, and one of these like high up guys or mm. girls, they didn't understand something. They would say, could you, could you, could you tell me what that means? I'm sorry, I'm silly question, but mm. can you, can, you know, can I ask a silly question? Mm. And that happened so many times at Expo. And I was just, I was just like, it's, it's, it's a, you know, I, I was, a, I admired the people that would, that would um, say they didn't understand something. 
rather than before maybe i would like pretend i knew what they were talking about and google it later yeah, yeah, there's yeah. something to be said for like art uh, you know saying asking a stupid question just to get the answer and 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 you might be a, a chief or a senior vice president mm. but you don't doesn't mean you know everything sure. and um and um yeah so i i just kind of i learned from these people around me and they're the best of the best and mm. i kind of felt like i was in audio i was just as kind of like on their level um you know they might be you know chief of law or or something to do with law and i had no no idea but they would have no idea about audio mm -hmm. they would see me as an expert in audio mm -hmm. so i was like okay well maybe i'm maybe i am an expert in mm -hmm. audio and maybe it's something that i can do and mm -hmm. and um so i just thought why not just set up my own thing yeah you know, i have the experience now i have the expo i have a good cv that i wrote mm -hmm. down a year earlier mm -hmm. let's give it a go yeah yeah but if you have now you are doing different like different mindset like when, mm. when when you said i'm going to to launch my business or to be partner with someone it's completely different and maybe the the negative thoughts came to you or oh yeah you are you don't have any more salary now mm -hmm. are you are you able to gain much more yeah, money yeah. than the expenses you, you definitely miss the expo salary <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know that's a that's a big change I, I, w I woke up every day after i had like a holiday after expo mm. because you can imagine it was it was it was a, it was a lot stressful yeah. and yeah um so i had a nice holiday after expo and and mm. i don't know i just really wanted to set up my company so i mm. i did wake up every day thinking mm. what what am i doing is this a good idea should i just apply for a job somewhere mm. um but i just just kept on yeah so I, there's just something in there's something i'm nearly four, i'm 39 nearly 40 mm. i was like if i'm not going to do it now i'm never going to do it yes, at all. and i'm looking at people in the industry mm. and i can i you know i'm I'm just as good as these guys mm -hmm. in the industry why can't i try and that was it why what's stopping me from trying i in i i could join a company have a safe salary yeah and you know what that you know what what kind of life is that yeah you don't like what you do no it's just i just want to look back on my life and mm. say you know at least i tried mm. uh, I, th I think launching a business or what what uh, you mentioned it doesn't matter the age it doesn't matter mm. the level of education or it doesn't matter it's all about the mindset i think yeah, like yeah, yeah. Your mindset when you focus when you feed your mind every morning i'm going to mm. to my goal i'm going to achieve what i want mm. and nothing else matters to mm. you don't you don't think i'm still young 35 39 and there are other people experience maybe mm. 60 50 they have been in the industry for a long time just you do it yeah so that what you're saying there is is when i joined expo i saw yeah. these older guys who work with presidents and and I think I would think oh my god amazing mm. but once you work with them for two years yeah. then you know that they're not at they're not god you know yeah. um you are on their level and that gave me the confidence to mm. do it um so yeah when I set up my business I thought that either I do free I get a freelance visa yeah um, which is a lot cheaper than than the mainland visa which i got mm -hmm. but i i kind of learned that i need to the biggest thing that i've learned since setting mm -hmm. up the company is that to start mm -hmm. um i did the mainland visa mm -hmm. because um it's easier to work with government um mm -hmm. and bigger companies also if you if you have a mainland visa and you called something mm -hmm. like our company's called with feeling expo or or any, uh, you know, we're working with lots of government mm. um, entities and I can't say who we're working for until mm. they come out. But they're more likely to want, they're gonna have that confidence to work with a company that's called something mm -hmm. rather than Chris, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's that's one big tip that I have for people mm. is if you are gonna set up a company here to set up a yeah. company, don't go freelance because big companies will, will have the confidence to work with another company. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and then, then I thought to myself, okay, well, I have this like hunt, this big pie, right? Mm -hmm. And hundred, I have 100% of my company mm -hmm. and 100% of this 100% is just, it means nothing mm -hmm. until it's worth something. Mm -hmm. So all, I, all I've done is start, Paid, I paid like a lot of money for mm. the license and, and the domain name and starting. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of brought on different people to be mm. part of this kind of journey that I'm on. Yeah. Because different people bring 
um, experience in different different areas. Mm. Um, and like I was saying, people people will feel comfortable working with your company if there's like five people or six people in the company, right? Yeah. So and and then I just give each, I kind of you know we have uh, their shareholders, so yeah. they own part of the pie that I that mm. I made, and that's kind of all I've done. Mm-hmm. And um, once you have this kind of pie and it's called something, yeah. it has a logo and it's cool and then everything else is perception really. Right. And we do great, obviously we do great work and everything, mm-hmm. um, but it's, we're, we're perceived to be like, a, you know, a, mm-hmm. a great company. We are a great company. Yeah. Um, maybe edit that out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but do you know what I mean? It's like, I think, I think that, um, you know, yeah, I'm lo- lost my train of thought, but having, having, starting and and calling this company something mm. is is far better than just being a freelancer yeah I think. Yeah. yeah so you, you made it with the feeling yeah yes okay so i can the, tell the, you how the, the name came the feeling i think i'm i'm not sure of course mm. you will tell me mm. the feeling came from the expo maybe <laughs> yeah yeah so um there's a one of my colleagues at yeah. expo amna yeah and um, she's the creative director of expo mm. and she was like chris everything everything that you're producing it always it has feeling you know mm. and um it just kind of stuck um mm. so when i thought of like the name i thought that you know i want my company to be an entertainment company i want to do a bit of music a bit of video mm. a bit of this and that and so i thought music with feeling video mm. with feeling podcasts yeah. with feeling <laughs> and it's what it's quite a cool name and mm. uh and so yeah i owe i owe amna kind of royalties comp- yeah. for that yeah yeah, so so with the feeling, uh, and Chris, you you are really a great example for many people who wants to open uh, or to set up a business. You 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 think? Do you think to launch a business? Do you need to have certificate or do you know how degree or uh, big capital just to launch? A, how mm. wh- what what do you need? I think for for, for everyone who's mm. listening here. What, what no. they need to set up a business? Um, so, like documents wise, you don't need anything to set up a company. You mm. need a little bit of money, mm. um, and I can I can tell you how much it costs if you want. Yeah, how much? Is it, is yeah, it, to to start your business, how much? Was yeah, it? so to for a, for a mainland license, you're mm. looking about you're looking about total total, total uh, like so total. mainland license about forty thousand. Yeah, which is a lot, and then my the domain name that I got with feeling dot com. Mm. Um, was was a lot. It's twenty two thousand dirhams, mm-hmm. um, but that's that's kind of a, that's that's it, which is a lot of money, mm-hmm. um, and that's why my why my wife, my wife wasn't that too happy that we were, that yeah. I was gonna I was going all in, mm-hmm. but it's the people that go all in. You know, you never hear a success story of of so. of anyone, and they were, it was just like handed them to on the plate. They t- they took a chance. They took a gamble, mm-hmm. and um, and yeah, I took a bit of a bit of a gamble I put all of my money in Mm -hmm. and when it comes to capital I like I was telling you I have 100% of the pie yeah why not give part of that pie to someone Mm -hmm. convince them that you know that they want to work with me and then for that piece of the pie they Mm -hmm. give me they give me capital so that's how I you're in you're in Dubai there's lots of people with lots of money and um and if they believe in what you're doing um, they'll they'll part with that money and they'll see it, they see mm. me as an investment. A lot of the people that invested in my company said I'm doing it um, because I believe in you and you're you're very yeah. driven and you're you're a, you're, a, you're an annoying pest. Mm-hmm. I get uh, they'll 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 often say that I'm just I'm I'm annoying and driven and I won't I won't stop until I till mm. I get what I kind of want. Yeah, it's true. And and you just went all in to launch your business. You yeah. you quit your job. You said, "Oh, I." I have didn't have a job. I mean, Expo finished. Finished. And I was like, "What am I gonna do?" Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, 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 this, there are some people here actually. They they said, "Okay, we want security, we want the salary. At the same time, we want to launch a business." Mm. So uh, I think there are many, but but but. The, 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 there is something missing here, which is time. Mm. Like, what is the valuable asset? It's time. Mm. So if you if you focus in, in two things, you get 50% here, 50% here, and your time 50% here, is f- 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 your time is 50% here, the results will be different maybe. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think I was saying to you before, like, mm. 
if someone asked me to do something, you know, 10 years ago, if someone asked me to do something on a Friday, which is our b- previous weekend at yeah. like eight, I would get so annoyed, you know, it's just like, mm. you know, come on, you know. Um, mm. But now if a client messages me at midnight mm. on a weekend, I'm like, I'm buzzing, I'm so happy. It's yeah. like your your mindset changes Yeah. from an employee to um, a business owner. Yeah, yeah. And, so. and I don't have a lot of time because I love kind of what I do. And, and I think the person that, that, that um, affects the most is my wife, really. She's, yeah. um, she's, she doesn't like that I'm always working, mm-hmm. um, but hopefully we all benefit in the end. And so, so how long did you uh, launch your business now? We, so we're 100, literally 100 days today-ish, 6th of June. It's about 100 days. Uh, and the results uh, it's, it's it's mad yeah it's yeah a lot of all I, I i remember yesterday i called you i i told you oh, let's have some discussion chris before going to the podcast yesterday yeah. saying okay i am in the meeting <laughs> now at the six o'clock i yeah. know how it's busy yeah. i know it's it's the beginning is you are trying to find a system but you are going all in trying to find i think you're right because i'm i'm kind of doing everything mm-hmm. so um so not everything obviously we have we have Joe who's, yeah. Joe does the, 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 the most of the compos- uh, composition work. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like the admin and the sound design and, and you know, if we buy something, I need to mm-hmm. get an invoice and then to t- need to send that invoice to the accountant. Mm-hmm. And then I need to print it and then stamp it and sign yeah. it. And it's like, oh my God, I've never done this before. So, so it's not easy. It's not, it's um, um, brain power. Mm-hmm. It's, it's easy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you know, it's like it's, but it's um, it, the the things that you need to do when you have a business. It's it's there's lots of like admin stuff to do. So, so how do you feed your mind? How to get the the right mindset every day, even when there is a tough week of tough day, of course. Mm. But if you have a mindset, of course, mm. th- th- there should be maybe something you do or. You wake up early morning, you meditate or you read a uh, book yeah. or you do this one in order to feed your mind. What do you do? Um, during Expo, I got, um, I gained a lot of weight and yeah. went a bit gray and because it's stressful. You like yeah. this, um, although it's exciting and, and mm. it's a brilliant experience, it's stressful mm. because it's, it was such an important event. Mm. Um, so, you know, I was w- had late nights, so mm. I would kind of re- reward myself with food. I, get, yeah. I think... N- Everyone does that. Everyone did do that expo. Mm-hmm. So now um, I, I do try and wake up with a positive mindset yeah. and I feel happy already because like what I, whatever I put into that day mm-hmm. today, I'm going to get back. Yeah. But I, I joined the gym. That's that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I try not to drink too much. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, yeah, if I start my day with with a gym ses- session yeah. with the trainer, I feel better for the rest of the day. So y- yeah. you feel that it's not showing yet, but yeah. it will. It's give me like one. It's give me six months, and it will go. Six months. Oh, so after <laughs> I'll never be like you, but it's, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I go every. I go every day, as you said. I mm. go to the to the. I don't like to go to the gym actually. No, I mean, I hate but going. But you feel I, good afterwards. Yes, I hate working on my legs when I said, "Oh, today you have leg day." Yeah, mm. it's I like said, what's the oh, point? <laughs> I want to stay with family. I want to go out. I want to do mm. other stuff. Mm. But your family benefit from you going to the gym because your yeah. mindset is so much more true. positive afterwards. Yeah, it's true. But when I go to the gym, I feel, as you said, the accomplishment after the the gym. Yeah. I feel with the energy. Like so, sometime, Chris, if, 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 really, it happens to me sometime when I don't go to the gym and I am not in good mood. Mm-hmm. My wife sends me to the gym, Said you have to go mm-hmm, to the gym mm-hmm. because you are not in good mood now. Yeah, yeah. So when I go to the gym, I it's come back, I am different, different person. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, energy, yeah. I remove the stress, I remove yeah. everything. So, the, and yeah. what, what you find is that now, you, when you go to the gym and you're like, you're refreshed and smiling and you yeah. c- call a client and then people can hear it in your voice that you're happy and smiling and, and um, you attract, if you're, so. if, you're, if you're happy and positive, you'll yeah. attract that True. into your life so yeah it's happened it's happened all it happened there's so many examples of my life where that's come that you know again you smile smile to the world the world will smile back yeah it's yeah. true so it's 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 when you give and you give and you give you uh, don't care about receiving it's give really without good. receiving yeah and you'll it, yeah it's it's um it's, it's the, the secret it's the secret to life i think yeah 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 and and i see here many people just 
wants to receive people want to get money 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 okay business now after two days or two, mm -hmm. six months if we don't receive or we don't recover our expenses mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. out when you yeah. what do you think when someone is launching a business mm -hmm. until when like when he's is supposed so, so it's different it will tell me yes it depends mm -hmm. but after after like what is the period like you have to, to check your business how it's going I, I, again like i'm 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 a hundred year old business mm. owner so it's standing sitting in front of this <laughs> is a bit weird mm. but um so i guess i just do things maybe a little bit different i always thought if you're a business owner you have to be mm. quite tough and yeah. ruthless and that's not me at all mm. so um i'm just i'm just I'm just nice. I, I ask I ask for upfront payment quite a lot, mm. but um, nine nine times out of ten, upfront payment comes. So if you have that cash flow, you can yeah. pay your suppliers, which are going to make them happy. Mm. Um, I feel happy because I can pay salaries. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and and I just feel better. So I think it, the only ruthless ruthlessness thing that mm. I have is that I that I ask for upfront payment, but it always happens. I think if if you're going into business with someone mm. and they don't pay you up front, yeah. it's kind of like, well, it's having that upfront payment is kind of like, okay, we're in with you. We're going to make this project work yeah. and we trust you. And, and that's kind of like the, that's, yeah. So that's, that's the only thing that I kind of maybe do a little bit differently to other companies, but so far it's, it works. Yeah. That's because you are really a great example because you said here, you came, you came because you came here in Dubai. You, you never traveled maybe one time or two no, no. times. And at the school, you were not like at the, at the top student no. of the A grade. And, and do, do you know someone from, from your student or something at the top? I know for me especially, I know people who were already at the top and the top. Mm at the, the business side or yeah. now mm. they are not on the top so it doesn't matter if you have good grades at the school mm. and then after yeah well i mean uh, schooling in general i think it's a bit the the system is like a bit yeah. wrong like um i was 15 you're 15 in the uk mm. you're 15 16 when you choose your a levels yeah so you're so in in re in reality you're ch at 16 you're choosing kind of what you want to do for mm. the rest of your life and um so when i was 16 there was no such thing as an iphone and yeah you know mm -hmm. i mean so um your job isn't invented yet so how mm. do you know what you want to be it's it's weird mm. so um again it's i guess it's another discussion and a bigger discussion but i think schooling mm. systems in general need to kind of be re rethought it's different yeah it's different because completely yeah what, what you study at the school is different what you receive in the life or what right. you do in the life yeah, it's completely yeah. uh and uh, and just now a question uh chris after 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 you opened and after you process the journey 16 years here in dubai mm. who are you now from the person who just came here and reached to this point how do you define yourself i don't know i think you have to ask other people i think mm. um i just maybe a lot more confident in my mm. ability mm. um i now i i, I look up to people but I don't look up to people because of what they have in terms of money and success. Mm. I kind of look at look up to people that are that are kind of like content, happy. Mm -hmm. um, Safia Al Shahi is yeah. a really good example. Like she was here. She yeah, was she. Here, yeah. yeah, she's. Um, for me, she's she's just like amazing. Like her her spirits. I mm. look up to people in that way. Um, and I want to kind of be someone like her. It's like just happy. She, yeah. Um, always smiling yeah. Yeah, yeah i think i think when i joined when i came to expo uh mm. sorry when i came to dubai mm. i was just like a bit i was shy i didn't really mm. i didn't know how good i was at my job or what potential i had and i guess now i'm kind of realizing that i do have like something to offer and mm. and um there is potential there and and i'm at that age now where i can kind of mm. you know offer services to to um to people and it's it's amazing doing you know, we're doing jobs for the Dubai government. It's like yeah. such a privilege. 
and um and for them to be like so happy to kind of working with mm. with feeling it's just like cool it's yeah. so, it's so yeah. rewarding uh, what do you think about failure um because what because, is failure though yeah so some people they have a fear of failure um we are not going to launch a business yeah. we are afraid to fail if we fail we don't have anything to pay we don't have anything so, mm. or they have a feel of people rejection or mm. they have a fear of uh, not enough mm. uh, mm. self-doubt or yeah i mean i think when i when i presented the song to her excellency yeah um and it got approved and everything like that that really like i don't know what happened in my brain or something I, but ever since then I don't I don't think about failure I, I, honestly like now mm. you've said it I I don't think that my mm. company will fail or I don't know it's weird it's like, it's, mm. it's really weird if I did I wouldn't have done it I yeah. wouldn't have started I just I'm always I'm always like half mm. a glass half full mm. there's no point being negative yeah. anymore it's true. doesn't it's true. It's true. you know but but maybe 5 years ago I was I was like a you know scared negative mm. kind of person so it's it's who you surround yourself with I think yeah. And I was surrounded by, surrounded, you know, I was, I was, you know, Her Excellency was my boss. Mm. And she's just, some, she's, a, she's, a, she's like a rock star. She's amazing. And she gives you that confidence. Mm. So yeah, ever since, ever since Expo, you just become this kind of positive person and mm. only good things can come from that mentality. So it's, it's important the environment you put yourself in. Yeah, yeah. Surround yourself by positive people. And you will be like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and th th this is the proof of Chris. Like, <laughs> he is one now. He's, he, has, uh, he, he has a goal. He, has, uh, he did many things now. He's, he's progressing. He's growing every day. Mm. That's really... And, and now I, I want to know, Chris, where you want to go. Mm. Where do you want to go? What, what's your <clears throat> goal? What's your purpose? Um, I mean, to be happy. That's mm -hmm. like number one. Um, I would love to have a family with my with my wife. Yeah. Um, and um, but in terms of um, the company, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't see why we can't be the biggest kind of music agency in the world. Like if mm -hmm. you think of our uh, competitors, I'm mm -hmm. like, I can I can get there. I can, you know, mm -hmm. we can what we do is is brilliant work like yeah. my my co my co-founder joe mm -hmm. he's the best he's one of the best in the world at what he does mm -hmm. and it's just it's just amazing to know that we're partners in this company and i just feel like so confident mm -hmm. um hopefully he feels like the same way with me i, I don't know yeah. but it's it's like being stronger together um so you need to you need to aim f it sounds so cheesy again but you mm. need to aim for the stars to end up yeah. at the moon right so, so, so. can't believe i said that on on a podcast but mm -hmm, but it's true yeah. there's no point no point um aiming to be mediocre right so so do you think in business in general like, do you need to to have a collaboration or partner with the people or just it's just a small example like when you are at school mm. when you when you collaborate with the other student they mm. they, they tell you oh you are a cheater mm. but in business different right I mean, if you think about Expo, Expo was a massive collaboration of mm. like 1,500 people in that office. Mm. And Her Excellency is, is amazing, but she can't do it by herself. Mm -hmm. You need to have people around you to, to bring out the best in you. Yeah. Um, and, and to have a different ex expertise in different areas. So mm. with, with Feeling, yeah. um, we have uh, six people that um, are brilliant in their own individual mm -hmm. ways. And that makes us stronger as a, as a unit. Mm. So I never, I never wake up worried or, or nervous because I, I know that I can call one yeah. of the shareholders or advisors and they'll give me advice and they'll be all right. I th mm. If you're on your own, if you're a freelancer on your own and you've got like a big project and you don't mm. know if you can do it, or t then, then, then it's stressful. I think you have to mm. surround, you have to share a bit of the pie yeah. and you have to kind of have, surround yourself with people that... Um, can it's, help you, it's, yeah. it's interesting to hear your voice uh, your your story how did you start it and how you became now and the journey of more than 16 years with the starting with the employment and then launching a new business mm. and and uh, this one maybe would be the, the last question i'm mm. really happy to 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 have you here uh, chris now if someone if someone like wants to launch a business to do a project mm. with any kind of project doesn't matter 
but he hesitated. Hmm. He said, oh, why I should go to this side and I have salary, I have, hmm. I am already secured. Hmm. What, 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 what will you tell him to this person? Hmm. Like hesitate, don't go fast or wait mm. or w- 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 what? <clears throat> um, I think with me, it was just, it, I just couldn't, with me, mm. it was just like something changed in my head. I just mm. couldn't knock. I wanted to have my business card. I wanted my name. I wanted to own something. And I think that comes with age, mm. possibly. I felt like I was at that point where I can kind of jump mm. off the, the cliff and, and see if mm. I can fly. Um, one one again age shouldn't matter but i did think like in 10 years 15 years time i'm going to be 55 yeah don't have a pension don't own a house Mm. you know um but i could own a business i could have some like a little bit like a nest egg Mm. so i think that um age was a big thing for me to think chris Mm. just just try to do it what's the worst that can happen what's the literally what's the worst that can happen if you try Mm. if you if you try and it doesn't work out you learn a lot yeah um, so I think you'll find lo- lots of like the richest people in the world yeah. set up many businesses that failed and they just kept going. It's true. I, I think, I, I don't know if being an entrepreneur is in everyone. Mm. Some, some people do like going to work at nine, finishing, closing mm. their laptop and phone at, at five o'clock, six o'clock. Mm. But that's not, that's not me. That's not, so. that's not me. I, I want, cause I feel like I can. Um, in the company that works for before, not Expo, but in the mm. one before, I felt like I could do things a bit better or, yeah. and maybe my ideas weren't being listened to. So I, I kind of, I think you're kind of born with it. Yeah. Right? So, so you tell the person who is it, just go for it. Try. Yeah. What, literally, what is the worst go that can in. happen? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I, um, luckily, I don't have kids. So maybe if I had kids, it would be a bit different mm-hmm. because you're thinking about other people. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, I think that when you need to make it work, mm. if you're someone that has like kids, not a lot of money, and but you have this like burning thing in you that yeah. you want to set up, you you will make it work because you have to. And if you have to, it will work out. Really, it's you just have to believe. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chris, for cool. coming here, and it was a pleasure to have you here and uh, this interesting conversation. And I wish you all the best with the feeling. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.